اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله we are still in this blessed and very sacred season first of all the season of the four sacred months which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for us as Muslims in Islam and above that we are in the most beloved 10 days the 10 days for doing good deeds in the sight of Allah the 10 days of Zul Hijjah and these days we have spoken about it in our last khutbah how great these days are in the sight of Allah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said dunya, the most virtuous days of the entire world of the year they are the days of the ten yani those ten days and ten nights of Zul Hijjah and my dear beloved brothers my dear elders, while we are moving with the days, we are coming to even greater days, subhanallah. Greater days. So what we see, it is like in the entire month Allah has blessed us with Ramadan. And then in the month of Ramadan, the greatest days are the last 10 nights and 10 days that everybody, they do i'tikaf. And then from among those great 10 days, the odd-numbered nights are greater. And then from among the odd-numbered nights, Laylatul Qadr is the greatest. So one is moving into the other. So we have the four sacred months of the entire year, Allahu Akbar. That Allah says, from the time He created the heavens and the earth, He made it sacred and holy. And the holiness and the sanctity of these four months have been recognized by all the Anbiya's alayhim salatu wasalam from the time of Adam alayhi salam. Why? Because in the Quran Allah says, from the time he created the heavens and the earth, he made four to be sacred. So these events were made sacred even before Adam alayhi salam was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then from among these, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about the 10 days of Zul Hijjah. And in the 10 days of Zul Hijjah, we spoke about the virtues of the days and the virtues of the nights. There is that great day that is coming up which is known as Yawmu Arafah, the day of Arafah. It is such a great day in the sight of Allah that Allah has chosen that day the day of Arafah to complete our deen, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent for the hidayat and the guidance of mankind. And from the age of 40 years, when he received the first revelation, he started his mission on the face of the earth. And year after year, year after year, he went through the most difficult times. Facing the most amount of hardships that any Nabi could face on the face of the earth. Having to sacrifice everything he had with him. But not giving up. It went on like that. Kicked out by his own family members. His own tribesmen. By his own people who loved him dearly. Subhanallah. And in a period of 23 years. Most of the time on the receiving end, subhanallah, the deen was getting bigger and bigger, Allahu Akbar. And the population of the believers were growing in numbers. And then, just in that very year, when he was taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prior to that, Verses that were known to be the last verses of the Holy Quran were being revealed. And from the time the surah, which is known as Ida Ja'a Nasrullahi wal Fat, the Prophet وسلم, understood his time was near. Because Allah in that ayah and the verse, 
He said, when you see إِذَا جَاءَ نَسْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When you see the help of Allah coming, and you see the victory of Allah coming, then what will happen? وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا You will see people entering into the religion of Allah, أَفْوَاجًا by large groups. Large groups will be coming and entering into Islam. Subhanallah. Then Allah says, O oh my Nabi, that's the time you need to prepare for your journey back to Allah. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Begin to make tasbih of Allah. Begin to glorify Allah. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. And begin to beg Allah for forgiveness as in istighfar. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, after that ayah was revealed, after every far salah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will do these two things. Tasbih and istighfar. Tasbih and istighfar. This is why that was so glaring to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that long after some time and some years after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala had a meeting with the Sahabas. And he, had, he brought in that meeting a young chap whose name was Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala. Very intelligent, great in knowledge. He was known as the mufassir of the whole ummah, Abdullah bin Abbas. He was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left the world, he was still very young. Probably 12, 13, 14 years around that time. Because of his youthful age, very young, many of the traditions and the things regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he learned from other sahabas. Because he was too young to go on campaigns. He was too young to travel on journeys. Very few he traveled on because of his youthful age and he was young. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never allow those under the age of puberty to go out on journeys with them. But he was very intelligent. And Omar used to always consult with him, although Omar was adult, old, and Abdullah bin Abbas was young. Even when he held meetings, he will call Abdullah bin Abbas as a young boy with the elders, with the great shiuks, as we will say, the great muftis of the what? Sahabas. So some of them, Umar was the Amirul Mu'minin. They used to say, Oh, Amirul Mu'minin, you are bringing this young lad with us here. We also have children, we can bring them. Why are you always bringing him here with us, big old men? <laughs> He's a young chap. So if you are doing that, then we have children, we can bring them also. So Umar ibn al Khattab wanted to show them why he brings Abdullah bin Abbas. So on one occasion, he brought all of them and then called Abdullah bin Abbas and said, sit down here. And he recited Surah Iza Jaa Nasrullahi Wal Fat, Surah Nasr. And he said, tell me, what is your opinion? What is the tafsir of this ayah, of these verses of Surah Nasr? He asked all those big sahabas, great sahabas. Everybody spoke about, you know, Allah will give victory to Islam. And all these things that we read in translation, all of them. And then he said, he said, oh, Ibn Abbas, you tell me, what is the commentary of this, this surah? He said, this surah tells of the returning of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to Allah. That is what this surah was revealed to say. He says, that is what that surah was revealed to say. The Prophet's mission is coming to an end. Omar said, that is also my opinion. Then they open their eyes to see that intelligence. So he said, explain to them why it is so. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was come to show man guidance, to complete Allah's religion. When Allah says in the opening verses, Allah's victory will come, it means his religion will come to an end. And when Allah's religion come to an end, O oh Messenger, there is no need for you again. It's time to go back to Allah. Religion is complete. 
This is why Allah said that in the beginning to give them glad tidings. But in the end, He was preparing the Prophet ﷺ for his journey ahead back to him. And this is what a person does. When you hear that you don't have much to live again, you begin to pray to Allah, isn't that so? You begin to check your tasbih beads. You begin to make dua. Because probably you are counting your days. You have been told you don't have long again because of your sickness or your illness. So this is the preparation everyone does to turn to Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told by Allah because he was the greatest Rasul of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So for 23 long years, with the odds against him, going through every difficulty, every hardship, every calamity, every suffering. Subhanallah, no, no stone remained on the streets of Makkah except they were all turned against him. Subhanallah, getting his on his blessed face, on his body. Sometimes he will fall unconsciously to the ground, bleeding profusely. All these things he took, but never ever give up. And finally, on the day of Arafah, when he had the entire gathering in the farewell pilgrimage, the last complete hajj the Prophet ﷺ performed with all the sahabas. There and then while he was speaking to him, Jibreel ﷺ came with the eye of the Quran from the heavens. From Allah, from the presence of Allah, he came with the eye of the Holy Quran saying, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati the meaning and message is that, O oh my Nabi, you have been struggling so long, trying so hard, knocking on the doors of everyone, trying to reach the message to the rich and the poor, the sick and the healthy, the male and the female, going through the gullies, going through the valleys, going through the huts, sitting with the poor, sitting with the beggar and the vagrants, just to give them this hidayat and teach them this religion. Now Allah is bringing a close to this religion, subhanallah. Now today Allah has perfected this religion on the face of the earth. Now today this religion is completed for mankind. And this is the religion that Allah loves and is acceptable to Allah and Allah is pleased. That the whole of mankind will have this religion which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why during the Khilafat of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, a Jew said to him, hadith which has been recorded by Imam Bukhari alayhi rahmah, the Jew said, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, O commander of the believers, there is a verse in your book. If a verse like that was revealed to us, Ma'ashar al Yahud, the group and the Jamaat and the, the people of the Jews, we would have taken the day on which that verse was revealed as a day, an Eid, a celebration. In other words, that ayah and that verse brought so much happiness to the people on the face of the earth that that day should have been taken as an, an Eid and a celebration. Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, which verse are you speaking about? And then he quoted, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Can you imagine religion we believe on the face of the earth started from the time of Adam alayhi salam. We as Muslims do not believe that the religion coming from Allah was different with every prophet. The fundamental truth is always the fundamental truth which has never changed for any prophet or any people. Tawheed, belief in the oneness of Allah. Allah is the Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the universe and the Lord of the world. Allah is Ilahu Wahid, the one God, the Khaliq, the Razik, the giver of life, the taker of life. And religion started there and every prophet came and did his part and went back to Allah. And upon the demise of every prophet, it remained incomplete because another prophet had to come and carry on. Subhanallah. It is like one taking the stick in a relay from the other to do his part. This is why in a very authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Mind similitude is like that person 
who passed by the most beautiful house. And the house was well built. Every brick went in its place, but there was a place for one brick for that whole house to be completed. I am that brick. I came and I went into that, ho that small hole. And with that, the entire house became completed. Something was missing. So actually, he drew a similitude with that. It's like saying every prophet who came was a brick in that complete house which Allah was building on the face of the earth. And all the other ambiyas came at different times and different places. And they, each was a brick. And one spot was remaining to be filled. وَأَنَا تِلْكَ labina. I am that brick that came in and completed. So, first time on the face and in the history of mankind, religion became completed. And religion became com perfected. At no point in time, whether it was at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, or the time of Musa alayhi salam, or at the time of Isa alayhi salam, religion was never completed. One of the greatest Rasul sent to mankind before the Prophet was Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus. And when he was leaving, the Bible says that and even the Quran says that. When he was leaving, because he did not die a natural death, Allah took him bodily into heaven. We believe in the ascent of Isa alayhi salam. And we believe in his descent which will take place also. He said to his people, there are many things I have yet to teach you, but you cannot bear them now. In other words, he is not going to remain with them. But when he, the Farqalit in his language, Aramaic, when he, the prince of truth shall come, he will guide you unto all truth, subhanallah. And in the original scripture, he used the word when Ahmad comes. And this is why the Holy Quran in Surah Saf, reveals exactly the words of Isa alayhi salam. And he said, a prophet by the name of Ahmad will come after me. You shall follow him, subhanallah. And this is why when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to Medina, the Christians of Najran came to him and started to question him about these things. And because of that, we are Muslims, but our Quran has a surah called Surah Maryam, the surah of Mary, Allahu Akbar. The birth of Isa alayhi salam has been given in such a descriptive manner that not even in the Injil it is given, not even in the Gospel, not even the Bible it is given to such length. It gives from the time when Maryam became pregnant, how she had to move, where she passed her days of pregnancy, how Allah revealed to her to shake the date palm to get dates to eat. Subhanallah. Step by step, a descriptive manner of how Maryam passed her time and how Isa alayhi salam was born. Allahu Akbar. So therefore, even when he was leaving, religion was not completed as yet. Why? Because he told them, a prophet is yet to come. Subhanallah. A prophet is yet to come. And that prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he came, what did he tell the people? He said, I am the glad tidings of Isa alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. I am the glad tidings. In other words, Isa alayhi salam gave glad tidings to his people that a prophet will come. I am that person. Subhanallah. So therefore, Arafah, the day of Arafah can, Arafah can be seen. Its greatness can be seen from this very, very ayah. That when Allah chooses to finally complete it, to put a seal and a stamp on it, and to close it, and to perfect it, Allah chose no other day than the day of Arafah. So when the Jew asked, subhanallah, he asked Umar that, he said that to Umar, Umar said, I know very well the day on which it was revealed. It was revealed on the day of Arafah, and it was the day of Jummah. So it was the coming together of two great Eid. We don't need to take another Eid. Subhanallah. Arafah is the biggest Eid. <laughs> and Jummah also, Allahu Akbar, Nurun ala nur, it was light upon light. So look, Allah choose from among all the days 
the first revelation came in Ramadan. And when the last verse was being revealed to complete religion, it was revealed on the day of Arafah. This is why the Prophet wasallam spoke about the virtues of Arafah. And he said, خَيْرُ dua." <coughs> He said the best dua that you can ever make is the duas you make on the day of Arafah. Duas you make on the day of Arafah. So the day of Arafah is so great. Besides the Hujjaj and the pilgrims actually going in Arafah and remaining for the entire half of the day after Zawal until Maghrib. Raising their hands, sitting, standing, crying to Allah. All the other Muslims on the face of the earth can benefit. It is so great. It is not only confined for them alone. This is why to show the greatness of Arafah, that it extends to all Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ said, Sawmu yawmi Arafah, yukaffir as-sanat al-madiyya wal-qabila, rawahu al-Muslim. That if you fast on the day of Arafah, Allah will forgive you for two years of sins. The year that passed already, and the year that is coming to you, whatever sins you may commit, Allah will forgive you for that. Just the day, the fast of Arafah. Now who the virtues are for? All the Muslims. Because the Hajis don't fast in Arafah. It is not for the hajis to fast on the day of Arafah. They can't fast. That's not in accordance to the sunnah, if you are a pilgrim. So therefore, who benefits from the greatness of Arafah? All the Muslims in the world. Allahu Akbar. This is why in another tradition, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَنْ يُعْتِقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ عَمْدًا مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ Arafah. There is no other day. On which the most amount of people and souls are freed from the fire of hell than the day of Arafah. It is that day that the most amount of people in the year, they are freed from Arafah. Just imagine every single person is saying to Allah, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an nar. Millions of Muslims, they are saying that. And Allah accepts that dua because they are making it on the day of Arafah. At the end of the dua is what? And protect us from the fire of hell. Allah will protect them. Millions are forgiven. Millions are blocked from hell. When shaitan sees what is happening on the day of Arafah, on the plains of Arafah, and outside the plains of Arafah, Muslims by the thousands and thousands are fasting on Arafah. And they are making dua. He becomes so infuriated. He takes dust and dirt and begins to pour it on his head out of what? Humiliation that this Banu Adam, this children of Adam that I have sworn to misguide. Look, Allah is giving them what? He is giving them redemption. He is giving them protection against the fire of hell. And look, he's forgiven all their sins. My whole year's effort has gone in vain. Every day I was behind them to commit sin. Every night I was behind them to commit sin. And all they had to do on the day of Arafah say, Oh Allah, I sincerely beg for your forgiveness. And his 360 days have gone in vain. Effort, subhanallah. Making this one miss salat. Making that one commit a sin. And on the day of Arafah, the believer recognized the greatness. And he said, Oh Allah, please I beg you, please forgive me. And Allah is just forgiven. Allahu Akbar. Allah is so lenient, he begins to forgive it. This is why the day of Arafah indeed is a very, very great day, subhanallah. It is a very, very great day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for us. So our day of Arafah is coming. It is coming within a few days' time, the day of Arafah is coming. And on that day, we are encouraged by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to observe the fast. The Arafah fast is not a fast that you have to join with a day before or after. The Arafah fast stands alone. You can't join it with the one after because the day after, after Arafah is Eid. And it is haram to fast on the day of Eid. So therefore, it is not from the Sunnah to join it. It stands. That day you join is the tent of Muharram. 
not the day of Arafah. So we are encouraged to observe that fast and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fill the rest of the 10 days with goodness so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us, Allah will forgive us, and Allah will grant us goodness in this life and the life hereafter. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Manafa'ana bi ayatihi wa dhikr al-Hakim. Nastaghfirullah. نستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إن الله السميع قريب مجيب دعوات